Hello and welcome to the Warhammer Lady. I'm Sarah. Uh, I've been going through the Dark Angels Codex, finally, and I thought I'd make a series of videos where I review the Codex uh, based on my opinion. And I thought I'd start off with the HQs of the Codex, uh, the name given ones only, because that's basically all I can fit into a 15 minute video. Uh, let's start off with Asriel. So this is Asriel. Uh, he's kind of a badass since he is the supreme grandmaster of the Dark Angels, so he has one extra attack and one extra wound. Also, if you choose to have him in your army, he has to be your warlord. And it makes sense. I mean, it would be really weird due to their lore if a, say, librarian pushed him around telling him what to do. So I think that's a nice touch. Also, he can choose any of the Dark Angel Warlord traits that he wishes. He doesn't have to roll for it. And this makes him also, lore-wise, a tactical genius. Um, you can, in the beginning of the game, choose a Warlord trait that's very efficient for the type of game you're playing. For example, if you're playing for victory points or if it's just to kill other units. Also, you can tailor your entire army around Asriel before the game begins. Um, so that's nice. Uh, other than that, he also makes all the Deathwing Terminator squads into troops and Ravenwing Assault squads. Uh, so he's really great for playing a mixed army. I mean, if I was playing the Deathwings, I would probably just take Belial and Samuel for Ravenwing. But as for a mixed army, yeah, Asriel is really good. And he has typical war gear of a bolt pistol, some frag grenades and crack grenades. He also has a couple of chapter relics. And first off is the Lioness Helm, which gives not only him but his entire unit a 4 plus invulnerable save. That's nice, he's a team player. Uh, he has Lion's Wrath, which is a ranged weapon. It's a, a master crafted combi weapon with a secondary plasma gun that also has a special rule blind. And he has Protector, which gives him the feel no pain uh, on a 6 plus. And the Sword of Secrets which has strength plus two and AP three, and is also master crafted. Um, he's naturally an independent character, and he has another special rule called Rights of Battle. And this is really cool, because it allows for all of the friendly units from the Dark Angels Codex to use his leadership when doing pinning tests or leadership tests or morale tests. And I think it's really awesome that it actually is usable on the entire board and not just a couple of inches away from him. Uh, he's a bit expensive, but then again, if he wasn't expensive, I think he would be overpowered. So I think that actually given him a sufficient amount of points for what he does. So this is Ezekiel. He's the Grandmaster Librarian for the Dark Angels. He is thus a Psyker of Mastery Level 3, so he's really good. And he has some war gear, the Artificer Armor, which gives him a 2 plus 8. The Master Crafted Bolt Pistol, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, and a Psychic Hood. Uh, also not to forget, he has one less weapon skill than the other HQs, and he's also a bit cheaper. Uh, he has a Warlord trait called the Hunt, which means that when he or his unit kills an enemy Warlord, you gain one extra victory point, which is very nice for especially victory points games. And he has one special psychic power that is called Mind Worm. He's also able to take two other powers from either the divination, the pyromancy, the telepathy, or the telekinesis disciplines. Now, what Mind Worm does is that it's a ranged attack of 12 inches, and it's an assault D3 attacks. And it's also a focus witch fire, so on a leadership role of five or less, you actually get to pinpoint, for example, a character in a unit. And this attack ignores cover, and it also has something called sap will. Now, what sap will does is that if a enemy character or an enemy model suffers a unsafe wound, they you get to reduce their ballistic skill, their weapon skill, their initiative, and their leadership by three to a minimum of one for the remainder of the battle. So the entire game. And this is nice, this is really nice. It gives you the ability to actually make a warlord, for example, uh, be much less dangerous. 
or you can make some not so close combat units be um, actually have the ability to take down a warlord. Um, he also has some chapter relics, of course. Uh, the Book of Salvation, for example, which gives every friendly unit uh, within six inches one extra weapon skill. And also Traitor's Bane, which is a um, which is a four sword, which is also master crafted and two handed. So basically, Ezekiel is a booster, and I think that he's he's not that good on his own, really, but he's absolutely brilliant if you put him in a unit of example, Space Marines. And I think it's definitely worth his points. So this is Asmodai. And just as Ezekiel, he has one less weapon skill and he's also a bit cheaper than the other HQs. He's the master interrogator chaplains of the Dark Angels. He has war gear power armor, which gives him a 3 plus 8. Also frag grenades and crack grenades, of course and a Rosarius, which gives him a 4 plus and vulnerable save. Uh, for weapons he has first up a chapter relic called the Blade of Reason, and it's a chain sword with the specialist weapon rule and instant death. Also he has a Crosarius Arcanum, which is a power mole, and it has every other ability that a power mole has, and it's also massive crafted. Now, since you only have specialist weapon on one of his weapons, you doesn't get a plus one attack for attacking in close combat, but he's very good for close combat. Um, he has special rules, fear and sea lot. So, due to his sea lot ability and also his instant death ability, you can, for example, push him, or I would push him in a group of like 10 space marines, and he would make a rather powerful assault first turn. and. I mean, first off, you get to reroll all your missed dice with that unit, and then second off, he has instant death on initiative 5, which is really good, for example, for challenges or killing off really nasty units, um, for example, terminators with uh, power fists or orcs with power claws, yeah, you name it. Um, so yeah, he's really good and he's also very cheap, and I would definitely take him for smaller games. This is Belial. Belial is the Grandmaster of Deathwing. He's a bit pricey, but I think he's worth his points if you play him right. I'll tell you why after I've told you all about him. Uh, he has Terminator armor, which gives him a 2 plus 8. He also has a Storm Bolter and an Iron Halo and a Teleporter armor. For a Warlord trait, he has the Hunt. And his special rules include Deathwing Assault, which makes you um, you don't have to roll for reserves, and before the battle begins, you also write down on a piece of paper if you want to deep strike in the first turn or the second turn. He also has something called Vengeful Strike, which means that after he has deep struck, the first time he shoots, his shooting weapons count as twin linked. And along with that, he has Mark for Retribution, meaning that on his shooting attacks, he makes precision shots on a roll of 5 plus instead of 6 plus. He also has tactical precision, and this means that when he deep strike uh, with the unit consistent entirely of models with the inner circle rule, such as Deathwing Terminators, uh, when they deep strike they don't scatter. And his trapped relic, because naturally he has one as well, is called Sword of Silence. And this is a power sword, but it also has the Master Crafted Special Rule and Fleshbane, which makes him wound always on 2+. Now Belial also makes all the Deathwing Terminator squads into troops, so you can choose to play an entire Deathwing army with him as an HQ. And I think it's really great, because I would personally pay a lot of points for having something that makes my troops not scatter. And if he comes down with a couple of Terminators and they don't scatter in, for example, the first, the first turn, it means that you can put down in the second turn all your other terminators if you want them to arrive by deep strike since they also have the Deathwing Assault special rule. Uh, they can land next to him within six inches without deep scattering. Without scattering, sorry. And I think that's really great, for example, on a battle board filled with terrain, because I personally tend to mishap a lot. And I would hate for an entire unit of terminators to die. 
so yeah, if you play him correctly and you make use of his deep strike special rules, I think he's awesome and worth every point. If you don't, I think he's overpriced. So this is Samuel. He's the Grandmaster of the Raven Wing. He's also, just like Belial, a bit pricey, but he's worth every point. He makes all the Raven Wing assault squads into troops, so you can choose to play with an entire Raven Wing army if you wish. Also, he has the War Gear Power Armor, giving him a 3 plus armor save. He has a bull pistol, some frag grenades, some crack grenades, and a teleporter hummer. His warlord trait is called Rapid Maneuver, and it means that his unit can choose to use two dice when running, and also to turbo boost an extra d6 inches. He has special rules called Hit and Run, Scouts, and Skilled Rider. Uh, first off, he he always rides a jet bike called the Corvex, and is fitted with a plasma cannon and a twindling storm bolter, but you can choose to upgrade him and put him in land speeder called Sable Claw. Sable Claw is a very durable land speeder. It has front armor 14 and side armor 14. It's a fast skimmer, equipped with a twin-linked assault cannon and a twin-linked heavy bolter, and it's also able to deep strike. And of course, Samuel has chapter relics. The first one is the Adamantium Mantle, which gives him the Eternal Warrior special rule. He's actually one of the only units in this codex that has the Eternal Warrior special rule, making him not unable to die uh, by instant death. He also has a Night Halo, which either gives him a 4 plus invulnerable save, or if it's on Sable Claw, his Land Speeder, it gives the Land Speeder a 4 plus invulnerable save. Also, he has a Raven Sword, its Strength User, and AP2. And it's also naturally massive crafted, so it's good, for example, against Terminators. Uh, I think Samuel is a very cool character. He is pricey, yes, but he's also a tactical advantage if you take him. For example, he makes your your Ravenwing Assault Squad into troops, and it can be a rather a rather large troop choice. You can have six bikes, one attack bike, and one extra land speeder in the same unit. So if he joins them, for example, he can move. He can move them with Skill Rider over difficult terrain, and he can also move them a potential of 30 inches with their 12 inch move in the first turn, and then a 12 inch turbo booth with a potential 6 extra inches. Which makes you able to, for example, hunt down specific units. And when you hunt them down, if you play a mixed unit, you can actually deep strike, for example, Terminators around Samuel, since he has to teleport her home where he won't scatter. Well, they won't scatter. And it gives you the ability to be very mobile and move around the battlefield a lot and assaulting um, <coughs> different units all the time, since you also has hit and run. I think myself that this is the coolest character in the Dark Angels Codex.